Welcome back to another Inkscape tutorial. In this video, we're going to be looking at the layers option in Inkscape and working with layers. It's a great skill to learn. If you've used Photoshop or GIMP before, you're probably familiar with working in layers or other software has it too. So we have a whole t um, tab up here or a whole drop down menu dedicated to layers in Inkscape. And to bring up the Layers menu, we just go all the way to the bottom of this, or we can hit Control shift l and it brings up this Layers dialog over here. So by default, everything we draw in Inkscape is just going to be on one layer. And I'm going to change my Fill and Stroke settings, so I'm going to go to Object, Fill and Stroke, because I had, I had some things changed last time. I think I had, didn't I have a blur? Well, we'll keep this change our color a little bit, and I just want to make sure I don't have any blur or opacity going on. Uh, and also, when I brought up Fill and Stroke, so now our layers um, went somewhere. It's right down here. We can click it and bring it back up. <clears throat> so you can toggle between open windows that you have this way. They'll just appear right down below. Sometimes if you dock them, they'll appear here on the side. So we can see we have layers here, Fill and Stroke here. We just click on Layers to bring it back. Okay, so this is everything is drawn on layer one. We know that because if we look down here at the bottom, we see layer one. And if we click, that's our only layer. So let's try, let's do something. Let's do, maybe let's draw a little bit of a scene here. So I'm gonna take this rectangle and we'll put it up like this. We'll make it green and then we'll uh, duplicate it. Control D and we'll bring it up here. And we'll make this like a blue, like a sky. So now we have like a ground, sort of, and a sky. And we want this to be our layer one, okay? So then we'll add a second layer. We click this plus sign. New layer name, we'll call it layer two. Sure, we'll call it layer two now. Actually, let's call it sun, because we're going to draw a sun in the sky. And it's going to be added above current layer. Awesome. Then we go back to our layer one. We can double click, and we can rename it to background. Now we have two layers, our background layer and our sun layer. And whatever one we click on, we can look down here, becomes the active layer. So on the sun layer, I'll go ahead and just draw a sun. And what's happening here? Oh, there it is. It was the same color. I thought it was behind it first. So it looks like a star right now, but if we double click and go to corners, we'll give it a whole bunch of corners. And now it's a sun. Now this green is looking like, and. Okay, you noticed we can we were on here. If we click on the sun, we, we go to the sun layer. If we click on the grass, we go to the background layer. I want to change the color of the grass, but we can talk. We don't have to, we don't have to go to that layer. Is what I want to show. We don't have to click on sun layer before we can select the sun. We can just click on whatever we want to, but it's on that different layer. And then if we go over here to the layers, we can actually turn. If we want to turn off the background layer and just not see it, we click this little eye here and it becomes a, uh, something we can't see now. But still there, we just can't see it. Same with the sun, we can turn the sun on and off. And then we can create a third, let's create a third layer and call it person. Now we have a layer called person and we'll draw a little character here. Um, sort of, we'll just draw like a very simple guy. All right, so now we've got a little character guy here, and we can also choose to not view that layer. It's a, it's a separate layer. And if we want to like send this sun way back below, uh, I don't think we can do that, yeah. See, if we, try to, if we try to lower it down or hit page down, it's already at the lowest level of this sun layer. And so we can't set it back behind the background. Also, it's going to be, if we move it, it's going to always be behind this person that we drew. And we can't push page up to get it to go ahead. We can't raise it a level because it's within the levels that it toggles between are all within its own layer. It, we can't do that. If we want to move it, we can do this. We, while we're on the sun uh, level, we can hit Control X and cut that object. And then we can go to the person uh, level, and it's person down here. We could change it down here to change background, change the person, and then we do Control V to paste. 
and now the sun is on the person level. If we turn off this level, we see that they're both on the same level. I'm going to hit Control X. We'll change back to the sun level. Control V and paste it. Now it's in the sun level again. Levels come in handy when you're uh, exporting to other programs. Sometimes you can it keeps that data, and so you can ex we can I think we can export this into GIMP. But we can keep this, especially in animation, if we wanted to animate this character, sometimes it's nice to be able to have it a separate layer so that it can animate separately from everything else without getting too messy. Um, so that's a good reason. It also just helps keep things clean. If, when you get lots of objects, um, it can get kind of messy. And sometimes you don't want to, I don't want to accidentally misclick and try and move his leg and accidentally move the grass instead. So something we can do about that, we can actually lock a level. Uh, so we can come here to the background and click this lock button and then that becomes locked so we can't click it anymore. That's pretty cool, huh? So if we can still click and move the sun, we can click and move any part of the sky around, but if we misclick on, on accident, we won't move anything. And maybe we want the sun just to stay there and not move. We can lock the sun level as well, or layer I mean, and then that layer is locked. So now all we can move is just this guy. So I hope that's been an informative introduction to levels in Inkscape. There's not much more to it than that. Oh, if we did want to, so let's unlock the sun. If we did want the sun to be over top of this guy, we can just change this by, I don't know if we can drag, I think we can drag the level and do that. What did I do? Oh, oh, okay, so this is good, to, good too. So I actually just made this a sub level. I just added it into person, so you can have you can have them um, nested, I guess you'd call it. So this is now in here, but we want it to be out. How do we get it out of there? Right click. Um, I'm not sure how to get it out now. You see what I did? I drag. I did a drag and drop, and I put it as a sub layer of person. So now if we turn off the person uh, layer, it turns off the sun and the person because the sun is a sub layer. So a good thing for this would be under the person, we have all their clothes and accessories and everything about them, their facial features. So we have facial features as a separate sub-layer of this person layer. But my problem is now, I'm not sure how to get it out of there. Oh, there we go. So now it's out. Um, and now I look, it's on top. It's because uh, I did get it moved down to where I wanted it to. But, so we can change this by going by here. We can lower the current layer and we can lower it even behind the background so we don't see it at all, or we can raise it back up again. Uh, so that's a way that you can, that's another good reason to use layers. It, you can kind of accomplish the same thing with levels, but if you have a lot of objects, it's sometimes good to have separate layers, and it helps you, like the name implies, layer objects on top of another as well. Hope you found this video informative. Go ahead and like and subscribe if you have, and we will catch you on the next video.